Hi guys, there are MPs that are worth their weight in gold as they do an amazing job not just for their constituents but also for the country. Case in point, Labour MP Darren Jones. You may remember him from other select committees I've responded to in the past. Here he was grilling Simon Thompson, the CEO of Royal Mail. Now the entity began its privatisation under the Tory Lib Dem government in 2010 and eventually was sold in 2013. This means its goal is profit driven or more precisely, shareholder-driven. Now, in order to get the best return for shareholders, you need a CEO in charge with that vision. And if he or she delivers on that, well, they get a massive bonus. Here, Darren Jones, the chair of the committee, asked Royal Mail CEO about his bonus. Why were you given a bonus of £140,000 last year? Yeah, the bonus that was paid to me last year was based on the business performance last year and based on the criteria that were set uh, by the remuneration committee at that point in time. When I looked at the long-term investment plan uh, parameters for the calculation of your bonus, I'd noted that the board had changed the way they measure your performance. So traditionally, it would be looking at revenue, profit, service level delivery. I understand it's been changed to just shareholder value. Is that why you dished out so many millions of pounds last year instead of investing it into the business? Because it creates the opportunity for you to get a larger bonus? No, not at all. In fairness, my bonuses are based on improving the business constitution, changing the revenue, growing the profitability, and also improving in areas such as CO2. But, you know, I'll come back to what I, I just, said. Can I just check? Because if I've misunderstood, then I'll, I'll apologise. But I read that for 2022-23, the long-term investment uh, program for bonuses for you and your colleagues on the board had been changed because according to the organization it couldn't accurately measure your performance on revenue and profits because of the state of affairs at Royal Mail and therefore it only looked at shareholder value is that not right oh my ouch <laughs> wonderful this is why you need politicians who do their research who understand what they're talking about I'll, I'll get back to the committee in just a moment, but this is really important. You have an MP who has done his research, who understands what he's talking about, understands what has changed here in this, in this particular case. This is the CEO who, you know, would receive a bonus based on uh, profit, but that was changed to shareholder value. Obviously, you know, if he's if he's funneling more money to shareholders, it's not going back into the company. It's not being reinvested. And this is at a time when Royal Mail are saying to workers, we can't pay you any more money. Now, this guy got a £140,000 bonus for doing that, it seems. I, my incentives are based on making sure that we deliver good quality to the customer and also make sure that we grow the business. And so there wasn't that change? No, there was that change. And I understand the point you're making. But in terms of what I focus on every day, what I'm focused on every day is making sure that we can give the best jobs in town and the long-term job security for the team. And we really do need that change. And, and it's not change that I'm doing for change's sake. It's change based on the changing needs of the customers and the reality that's around us. The point I'm trying to get to is that you are incentivized as the CEO of Royal Mail purely by delivering value for shareholders. It doesn't really decide, depend on how you get that. I mean, ideally, you would get shareholder value because you run a profitable, happy, successful business. But actually, if you cut costs, cut investments, cut the workforce, and still deliver a large dividend, you still do well out there, don't you? No, what I'm focused on, as I said before, is changing the business so we can compete in the parcels market. And we've invested that £900 million. I'm pleased to say that you know, our super hub in Warrington has come on stream and that is working very well. The other investments we're making in the Midlands with the super hub is also coming on well. We've grown our parcels automation from some 20 odd percent. Uh, it's now up to over 70 percent. What we need is the ways of working so that we can really compete in the market. And I'd also like to add as well that during my time here as CEO, we've really led the initiative around low CO2 for parcel, the next battleground. Uh, that is out there and I'm, it's great to, to be able to report that because of our feet on the street model and our invest, investment in electric vehicles that we're really leading um, in this initiative and that's something that'll be good for the future of the business as well as society. Well I congratulate you on that but if you don't have any workers Mr Thompson I'm not sure it's all going to go very well. <laughs> wonderful, a wonderful end there. Now the problem with privatisation is as we've seen it's either profit driven 
or it's shareholder driven. And if money is not reinvested in the company, then you're going to have a worse service. Now, we didn't it didn't go into much detail here, but the what the Royal Mail seems to be focusing on is parcels because parcels are more profitable at the expense of letters. Now, as I said before, if you have a public owned entity, like for example, transport system, it's going to provide a service to the public, even if it isn't profitable. But if you have a, a private company, they're, on, they're only going to focus on what, what drives profit, what creates revenue. It's not going to focus on things that are not profitable. And this is the big problem with privatization. And this is why it's necessary to bring a lot of these entities back into public ownership. Because if Royal Mail decide, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to abandon letters, we're going to focus only on parcels, that's worse for the public. That's not providing the service that the public need. Yes, the number of letters being posted over the last number of decades has reduced because more and more people are relying on other alternatives on electronic alternatives, for example. But letters are still needed to be sent, but the cost of sending an individual letter has risen. So private companies are abandoning that or avoiding it. And there have been a number of scandals um, over uh, letters arriving and not arriving uh, around the Christmas period and the focus instead being on parcels and a lot of targets that have been set by senior management um, resulting in parcels, small parcels or letters being stored in warehouses and not being delivered in order to reach these targets. Uh, but once again, th it's necessary to have politicians like Darren here who will hold these people to account. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.